there. I'm so glad you could join me today. I have another fun decoupage DIY Dollar Tree decor project to show you. This little bunny with a uh, crate and a little fence. I got everything from the Dollar Tree and about a week or so ago, I did a haul and it included the Dollar Tree and Dollar General and Target. If you didn't see it, please go to my channel, Decoupage DIY with Joan Marie Domino. There's lots of videos there. Why don't you please subscribe, hit the little bell down there so you'll get a notification every time I put a new video up and please share as well. Okay, let's start making this fun bunny. Okay, here's my Dollar Tree bunny. First off, let's remove the tag. We're not going to need that. Okay, just put that off to the side. We're going to put a coat of paint on. I'm using Rust-Oleum's Pink Chalk Paint. It comes in a pretty big container, so I put it into small containers like this one. It's just easier to use. Now, this Rust-Oleum paint, it does come in large containers, and normally I don't buy colors. I usually just buy white and ivory, but I was in a store called HomeSense, which is like a home goods. They had a sale area, and this was $8 for a pretty big container, so I paid the eight dollars i brought it home and i absolutely loved it and when i was picking a color for my bunny i decided this is the color i was going to use you don't have to use this exact pink you can use any of the pinks that you have or yellow or green whatever you want it's going to be your bunny okay my bunny's all dry and now i'm ready to put on the mod podge now the mod podge i use is the matte formula i use it like 95 percent of the time i don't need to use a lot of the other ones with different finishes because my sealant determines the final finish whether I want glossy or satin so I'm gonna open up the bottle and I'm gonna put it all over there all over <laughs> squirt it all on and I like using these little bottles from the Dollar Tree when I'm doing something so large because it just makes the job go so much faster and so much easier okay now um, the method I'm going to use to uh, apply the napkin in this case is called the iron-on method. It's one of my favorite methods. If you've never watched any of my videos, you might be wondering, well, what is the iron-on method? Well, the iron-on method is when we actually do the decoupage and the glue is dry. It's really fun. That's why it's one of my favorites. It has really, really good results. So I'm gonna pay a lot of attention to the edges. That's important for the final finish. My first coat of Mod Podge is completely dry, and now I'm putting on my second coat, and I'm putting it on exactly the same way. I'm using that awesome little bottle that I got at the Dollar Tree, and I'm brushing it on, and I just want to remind you that because of the method we're using, which is the iron-on method, you just want to make sure you get all of the edges because when we remove the excess napkin, you don't want it to tear or lift off. Okay, my second coat of Mod Podge is still wet, so I'm gonna put that off to the side, and I'm gonna go onto the flowers. I'm putting three flowers between the bunny's ears. This is the flower that I chose. However, I felt that pink was a little bit too bright, so I decided to tone it down by adding a little bit of paint, and the paint color I chose is ivory. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on my brush, and I'm just gonna go over some of that pink, not all of it, I just wanna tone it down. I want it to look a little bit more vintage or country. Um, I just think it's gonna look better with the napkin that I chose. And by the way, I got these flowers from uh, Hobby Lobby and I bought them off season. I got a whole bag for like a dollar. Okay, I'm gonna do all three and I'm gonna be right back. The second coat of Mod Podge is now dry, so we can go ahead and put our napkin on. Uh, this is the one I chose. It's from Vippy's Designs. When I saw that they got buffalo plaid in, I was so excited. So I'm going to open it up, and this is going to fit on the whole bunny. This is a luncheon-sized napkin, and I'm going to separate the napkin because when we decoupage, we only use the top printed layer. I just put a little bit of Mod Podge on between my two fingers, and I'm just going to go up like this. And can I remove both? That's okay. That's okay. It's all right, because you're going to see we're not going to see that. All right. <laughs> Sometimes that happens, but you'll see it. We're not going to have it on the bunny. It's plenty big enough. Okay. So we're going to line this up the best we can. That's the only thing about buffalo plaid is that it has stripes, and you have to try to get it straight. 
So I can't see it completely, but kind of. So I'm just gonna do the best I can. And see the rip, it's no place near where I'm gonna be ironing it. Okay, iron. I use a craft iron. I'll bring it over here. Has a nice little tray it sits in. Um, this is by Cricut, I'll show it to you. Um, you don't have to use a craft iron. You can use your household iron if you want. I do a lot of iron on at home. I use it almost every day. Um, that's why I have it. All right, still trying to line this up. Looks good. Okay, the next we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a piece of baking parchment on top like this. I'm kind of holding the napkin in place. All right, I just wanna say that parchment paper, there is a difference in quality. I use parchment paper made by Reynolds because the Dollar Tree, I, I don't know if this happened to you, it kept sticking to the napkin. Where when I use Reynolds, not only does it not stick, I can use it like three or four times. So actually it doesn't really cost more if you think about it like that. Okay, so I'm gonna take my iron, I'm gonna start from the center, and I'm gonna go out like this. I'm gonna keep moving. This is a little different from other things I've done in the past because it's not square or round. This has, you know, the ears and it's got the little feet. So I have to be a little bit more careful when I'm doing the edges. As I do this, and remember, uh, safety first. I'm gonna put this over here. I'm just going to pick up and take a look at my edges as I go along because it's adhered now. And that is looking pretty good. Let's take a look. Sorry about the noise. Okay, let's go down to the bottom part now. Same thing. Okay, this is where the feet are. I'm just gonna take a little peek. Like that. Okay, done good. This is a fun project. I don't think it's like really difficult to do and it's not real time consuming, but not everything we make has to be, you know, filled with all kinds of tips and everything. Just like to make things that are fun. Um, you know, with spring coming, uh, which I can't come soon enough because we have like a foot of snow outside. Um, it's fun to do projects like this. Okay, let me make sure I got this here. Okay, I'm gonna take a look at this to make sure all the edges are down. Okay, and remember iron is hot. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so now you can really see the outline of the bunny. Okay, it looks like over here, I'm gonna have to do a little bit more with the ear, but that's okay, my iron is still on. Let's see, everything else looks pretty good. All right, let's just go back over and do that ear. Let's pick it up, take a look, you see it? And then just do that. I'm actually gonna do a little bit more around the edges just to make sure um, when I take off the napkin, I don't use a scissor. I'm going to be using um, a nail file. And if you don't get all the edges, when you go to remove it, some of the napkin come, can come off. It's not that it's a catastrophe. We can fix it, but it's just, you know, it's just nicer if it comes, uh, you know, it gets done the right way the first time. Okay, let's take a look. I love this. Okay. Let's see. Okay, looks good. As I sand this, if I see any edges come up, I'm going to stop and I'm gonna put a little bit of glue underneath, a little bit of the Mod Podge. Okay, so this is how I'm going to remove the napkin. Okay, I'm going to use a very brightly colored <laughs> nail file. Of course, it doesn't have to be like this. A lot of times I use a sand sponge. I'm not using the sand sponge on this particular wood because it's, it's more fragile. So this is definitely the way to go. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. All right, just gonna hold it, and you're just gonna go like this, straight down. And as I do that, a lot of glue on the edges, it's gonna come apart just like that. See how nice and clean that is? A little tricky because again, it's not square or round, but we'll get it all off. Okay, I finished taking off all of the edges and it was a little tricky around some spots. So if you want to, you certainly can use a scissor. You don't have to use a nail file, but I am going to use the sand sponge now because I'm going to rough up the edges. I want to remove some of the napkin because I want to give it more of a vintage look, um, something that's not brand new that came from the store. So I'm going to very, very gently go all around the edges and I'm going to keep checking 
it as I do it, just to make sure um, I'm not taking too much off. So that's why I'm gonna say, when you use this method, you just wanna be really careful. Um, take off less in the beginning, and then if you want to do more, then you can do more. So always best to start with a light hand, just like I'm doing. So I'm gonna go around the whiskers and the legs. I'm gonna just basically do the whole thing. I'm also gonna rub across the top because I wanna take out some of the shine. I am going to remove some of the napkin just a little bit, but I think you're really gonna like the way this looks. All right, so I'm done sanding it. I'm just gonna hold it and tilt a little bit and I'll point what I did is I just roughed it up. I just roughed up the edges just to give it more of a vintage look. And see in here also, I just took a little bit of the napkin off. Okay, now we're gonna go on to the next two things, which is putting the flowers here between the, um, between the ears and also the little bow in the front. All right, so these are dry. And you can see, here's one that I didn't do. You can really see the difference and I really just think that's too bright. So I think this worked out better. Okay, so let's put them on. I have my glue gun, safety. Glue on there. Okay, and I'm gonna start with the center. Right here, I'm gonna press that down. And while I'm holding that, if you notice my finger here on my left hand, if you hear that little voice inside your head say, you better not do that, you're gonna get hurt, listen to it. Okay, the next one. Alrighty. Whoop, okay. And I'm gonna put that right here next to it. This looks so cute. So spring-like. I love how they look um, with the pink, with the pink paint. It really looks nice. Okay, one more. Okay, and I'm just gonna kind of tuck that in under this one too. That's why I always do the center one first. Okay, lift that up. Okay, that's really cute, look at that. Oh, I love that. Okay, now for the bow <laughs> here um, under the little bunny's face. Now, I'm not a big bow person. It's not that I don't like them. I just have a lot of trouble making them. So I finally found a technique. It's called a messy bow that works for me. And what it is, and again, this is not my forte. I'm not a pro at doing bows, is you take pieces of ribbon, oops, sorry, and you just kind of lay them down on top of each other with like a piece of wire or something here. I'm using like a tie actually from bread because that's what I had. And you just cut like different lengths and different colors and you just start putting them on top of each other. Um, I looked down in my craft supplies to see what I had so I can do different colors. Even though they're like bright colors, it does, I don't know, it, it does kind of work with every your, in whatever your project you're doing. It's just, it's a really cute technique. Whoever came up with this, um, oh, look, I've just enough, um, really came up with a nice, easy thing to do. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the twist tie and I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna twist around it to keep all of the little pieces of ribbon together. <laughs> oh boy, okay. I'm gonna twist it. I'm gonna hot glue it down anyway. And there you can see, you just kind of move it around. Once I get it on, I can trim some of these as well. Okay, so let's glue this on. All right. A little hot glue. All right, I'm gonna put it in the middle like this. How cute that is. It's kind of long, I'm gonna to have to trim some of those, but I don't like this. So I'm going to take a piece of ribbon. I'm gonna make a little bow, just like that. See, I can make those kind of bows. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just cut it like that. And I'm just gonna put a little glue there. Try not to burn myself. And I'm gonna put it down on top. Like that. That's cute. Kind of 
kind of long. I'm going to trim those, but very, very cute. Okay, so let me trim these, and when I come back, we're going to work on the crate. Onto the crate. The crate is going to go in front of the bunny. Now, this crate and this crate, they both came from the Dollar Tree, and to be honest, I really couldn't decide upon the bigger one or the smaller one, and I did decide the bigger one, and you're going to see why when I get to the end of the video. All right, so I'm taking... Uh, this is by Delta Paint. It's called Trail Tan, and I'm going to paint the crate. Okay, so I just squirted some of the brown paint right onto the crate, and the crate, the Dollar Tree crates, these Dollar Tree wood, they seem to absorb the paint rather quickly, and it dries really fast too, but it doesn't really matter. I'm only gonna be doing one coat on this. It's not going to need two coats. It's gonna have things in it and things in front of it anyway, and it's gonna look really, really pretty. So just wanna make sure I get all the way around and I wanna do the tops, and then I'll be ready to go on to the next step. It's coming out really cute, I like it. Okay, so my crate is all dry and I'm ready to adhere it to the bunny. And I like, look, it actually fits right in between the bunny's two feet. I really like that it happened to work out that way. Okay, so now I'm going to add glue onto the crate and you can see I didn't paint that side because you're not gonna see it anyway. And of course I'm running out of glue, but that's okay. Uh, there's enough glue on that to adhere to the bunny. So I'm gonna put it up against the bunny and then I'm gonna hold it with my fingers because I wanna make sure that it adheres really well. I love this bunny. I think you can hang this on the wall if you want or it would look really, really cute sitting on the counter. I like it, it really came out nice. Okay, now because I ran out of glue, I'm gonna put a glue stick into my glue gun now. And what I use is the Gorilla Glue Sticks. I've been using them for a while and I have to say, I really do like them. They do a good job and the glue, I think it seems to be a little stronger than other glues I've used in the past. Okay, so now we're gonna get up to the point where I wanna add the fencing around the crate. Um, these are some popsicle sticks. I bought them at the Home Depot. I cut them in half. I painted them white and I'm ready to put them on. So now that I have glue in my glue gun, I'm going to put it along the wood and then I'm going to press it up against the crate and I'm just going to hold it there to make sure it stays. And then I'm gonna finish putting the rest of the fence. The crate is all done. I add the rest of the picket fence and I put a little sign on that says Cottontail Farms. They don't sell cottontails. You just have a lot of rabbits. You just wanna make sure that you know. And that's just a little piece of cardstock and I wrote that. That's just my own handwriting. I put some filler inside. I thought, okay, what can we put inside? Well, you know, if it's Eastery, then you certainly could do some eggs. These are actually decoupaged eggs. I have a video for that if you want to learn how to do it. And that looks very cute. I have to be honest, this would not fly in my family. So I think one of the things you can do is to put candy in it, especially if it's sitting on your counter. Put all kinds of candy. Uh, my family would definitely love something like this. So I think that you should make this. And if you like making this, I have lots of other videos on my YouTube channel, Decoupage DIY with Joel Marie Domino. You should definitely subscribe. Hit the little bell down there. When you hit the bell, you're going to get a notification every time I put a new video on. Please give it a thumbs up. And, you know, I also have a Facebook group page which goes along with my uh, YouTube channel and it has the same name. I want to thank you so much for watching. And I want to thank Art. He does a really great job doing my videos. And I'll see you next time.